built during the golden age of steam, the Milwaukee Road of the Midwest United States developed a series of streamlined express steam locomotives that were among the most powerful in the world and had the opportunity to present speeds that regularly exceeded the venerable LNER A4 Pacifics of the UK in day-to-day -day operation. However, despite their potential to reach up to 130 miles an hour, no records exist beyond anecdotal evidence that these machines could have obtained the world speed record for steam traction, while the end for the Milwaukee's streamlined champions would come in the form of all units being quietly scrapped, despite their iconic nature and exceptional performance. The Chicago, Milwaukee, St. Paul and Pacific originally came into existence as the Milwaukee and Waukesha Railroad of 1847, though before even the first rails were laid, the company was renamed to the Milwaukee and Mississippi during 1850, and by 1851, the firm had reached Waukesha, Wisconsin, 20 miles west of Milwaukee, eventually connecting Madison and Prairie du Chien on the Mississippi River by 1857. Various acquisitions would soon follow, the most notable being the purchase of the St. Paul and Chicago to create the Chicago, Milwaukee and St. Paul in 1873, which also included the railroad's first foray into the major Midwest center of Chicago on the shores of Lake Michigan. Throughout the early 1900s, the company faced severe financial hardship during the development of its technologically innovative but economically crippling Pacific extension, created so as not to lose its competitive edge against the Burlington and the Northern Pacific on vital services to the West Coast. While electric traction on the steepest grades of the Rocky Mountain Division was a pioneering achievement for American railroads of the West, with the overhead wires reaching Seattle in 1927, the total cost of the project was $234 million, or $4.1 billion in 2023, the result of which saw the Milwaukee Road enter bankruptcy in 1925. Following a corporate reorganization, the railroad emerged in 1928 as the Chicago, Milwaukee, St. Paul and Pacific, but the still heavy debts of the Pacific extension weighed hard on the firm, and in 1935 the railroad entered bankruptcy again. However, regardless of its financial difficulties, the Milwaukee Road was still able to garner significant freight and passenger contracts to keep it operational, its most important expresses for the period being the Twin Cities services between Chicago and the Twin Cities of Minneapolis St. Paul, Minnesota, and by the early 1930s, three railroads fiercely competed for daytime passengers on this vital corridor, the Milwaukee Road, the Chicago, Burlington and Quincy, and the Chicago and Northwestern. Covering a distance of 400 miles, the average speed by 1934 was around 40 miles an hour and would take 10 hours to complete the run, though due to the ever-increasing importance of passenger traffic between the two Midwest regional centers, the railroads committed themselves to ensuring that the Chicago-Minneapolis-St. Paul corridor saw journey times reduced to within six and a half hours. The Burlington struck first during April 1935 with their diesel-powered Twin City Zephyr which was a continuation of their original Pioneer Zephyr units, unveiled during 1934 and built by the Bud Company, and comprised initially two three-car sets capable of achieving 104 miles an hour. These were complemented by a pair of additional six-car sets following their initial success, and with four units now working the run between Chicago and Minneapolis-St. Paul, the journey time had now been reduced to only 5 hours and 31 minutes. Fearing the loss of this major commuter corridor, both the Milwaukee Road and the Chicago and Northwestern responded through the development of individual steam locomotive projects that would attempt to reduce the journey times on their main lines to less than six and a half hours. Having seen the potential of the Pioneer Zephyr during 1934, and aware that a variant of the diesel train set could be put to work on the Chicago-Minneapolis-St. Paul run, the Milwaukee Road had commissioned the American Locomotive Company, or ALCO, to develop a series of streamlined steam engines capable of 100 miles an hour. The result was the Class A, the last 442 Atlantic configuration steam locomotive built in the United States, and were designed specifically to be operated at 100 miles an hour on a day-to-day -day basis, incorporating a number of innovative features to ensure robustness for its especially taxing workload. While the underpinnings were generally conventional, one of the main goals was to reduce the reciprocating mass, which could not be completely balanced requiring the use of a higher boiler pressure of 300 psi, which allowed for smaller pistons, the reciprocating mass of the connecting rods also being reduced with the use of four driving wheels rather than the more usual six. 
The main rods were connected to the first pair of driven wheels rather than the second, again in defiance of usual convention, and was done to reduce the reciprocating mass and provide a more even power throughout the stroke, the driving wheels themselves being 84 inches in diameter that reduced piston speed and made high speed less taxing on the machinery. These locomotives were also to be oil-burning rather than coal-fired, as this allowed for a far quicker turnaround in servicing time so as to maximize the engine's ability to run multiple services between Chicago and Minneapolis-St. Paul per day. As for their iconic streamlining, this was the brainchild of designer Otto Kuhler, who had previous experience designing a prototype version of what would become the PCC streetcar, and the streamlined express diesel sets for the Gulf Mobile and Northern Railroad dubbed the Rebel, which worked between New Orleans and Jackson, Tennessee. To complement the streamlined express locomotives, the Milwaukee Road commissioned its own shops to develop matching passenger cars that would be the very pinnacle of luxury train travel in the Midwest, outshopped in the company's famous orange and brown, and would comprise initially five coaches. The introduction of the Class A's was done in tandem with the start of a new named passenger express for the Chicago to Minneapolis St. Paul run, this being dubbed the Twin Cities Hiawatha, with the Hiawatha name being of Iroquois origin and means he makes rivers. Two weeks before entry into service on the inaugural Twin Cities Hiawatha, Class A No. 2 was tested between Milwaukee and New Lisbon, Wisconsin, with a dynamometer car behind the locomotive on May 15, 1935, during which it was able to attain a record-breaking top speed for steam traction of 112.5 miles an hour over a 14-mile run, while also making it the first steam locomotive to break 110 miles an hour. In this flurry of public relations excellence, the Twin Cities Hiawatha made its debut on May 29, 1935, and was able to run the 421-mile journey in excess of 100 miles an hour on a regular basis due to the favourable topography and profile of the route. The popularity of this service, soon seeing it overwhelmed in terms of patronage, and thus the five-car rakes were lengthened to nine cars. Such was the demand for the Twin Cities Hiawatha, that a third Class A was delivered by Alco in May 1936 and a fourth in April 1937, this being combined with refurbished passenger equipment to complement the Hiawatha trains, the consist for October 1936 being a baggage car, four coaches, a dining car, and three parlour cars, including a new beaver tail parlour observation car. The Class A's, however, would not be the end of the design philosophy for faster trains on the Twin Cities Hiawatha as with the ever-increasing demands for this service, thus necessitating longer trains, a more powerful version of the design was needed, and Alco was commissioned once again to improve the breed. The follow-up class, though, would spiritually come to pass on the tracks of a rival railroad, in this case the Chicago and Northwestern, where in order to accelerate their flagship Twin Cities 400 from Chicago to Minneapolis-St. Paul, the Alco company was tasked to deliver nine 464 streamlined passenger locomotives based on the general underpinnings of the earlier Class A's. The result was the CNW Class E4 of 1937, a streamlined series of engines that were originally intended for the Twin Cities 400, but before delivery were immediately displaced by the CNW's last-minute decision to opt for EMC E3 diesels, thus meaning the E4s would be redeployed on sundry other work until their final withdrawal in the mid-1950s without ever having fully been proven. The design of the E4s, however, would find greater success in the Milwaukee Road's Class F7, as released between August and September 1938, and comprised six units, the F7s again being of a 464 wheel configuration, but unlike the E4s were built to burn oil like the earlier Class As, rather than be coal-fired. Once again, the Class F7s presented incredible performance, and regularly operated not only in excess of 100 miles an hour, but could even be pushed beyond 110 miles an hour and sometimes even 120 miles an hour, with the highest stated figure ever recorded for a Class F7 being 132 miles an hour, far outdoing the Deutsche Reichsbahn's Class 05 and the London and Northeastern Railway's Gresley Class A4 Pacific. The Class 05 had seized the world speed record for steam on May 11, 1936, attaining a top speed of 124.5 miles an hour on the main line from Berlin to Hamburg a record it would hold until July 3rd, 1938, when LNER's 4468 Mallard surpassed it with a top speed of 126 miles an hour, a record that remains unbroken to this day. 
However, the Class F7s, based on the experiences of drivers and certain passengers, could indeed have been capable of matching the 125 mile an hour top speeds of the German and British locomotives, but no official test run was ever conducted to truly push these machines to their very limits, despite the far more favorable track work of the Milwaukee's main line from Chicago to the Twin Cities. In one famous instance, French railroading expert Baron Gérard Boulet clocked an F7 at a sustained average speed of 120 miles an hour for 4.5 miles between Chicago and Milwaukee, while the peak speed achieved by the engine was measured at 125 miles an hour, though due to his test and the reports of the engine crews being done unofficially, none of these instances could ever be considered verified records. Nevertheless, while the Class F7s were never driven under official recording to an excess of 120 to 130 miles an hour, these trains, on a daily basis, presented the fastest average speed for regular passenger expresses in the world, as while the likes of the LNER A4 and Class 05 could reach 125 miles an hour, they never operated at this speed consistently during normal service, with the speed records obtained under very specific conditions. The Class A's, though, plied their daily trade well in excess of 100 miles an hour, while the LNER's A4s, in service, completed their journeys with an average speed of only 40 to 50 miles an hour due to the winding nature of the East Coast main line between London, Northern England and Scotland, as well as the expense of 120 to 125 mile an hour running in terms of resources. As an example, in 1939, only a year after their introduction, the Twin Cities Hiawatha schedule was modified so that the Class F7s could conduct the 78 mile journey between Portage and Sparta in Wisconsin in 58 minutes, with a start-to-stop average of 81 miles an hour, thus undeniably the fastest average speed for regular passenger trains in the world. Through World War II and into the late 1940s, the fleet of 10 Class A's and F7's would continue to ply their trade on the fastest expresses between Chicago, Milwaukee and the Twin Cities, the only difference made in their general design being the fitting of an additional Mars light above the original single headlight to further enhance the safety of daily high-speed operation. However, come the end of the decade, diesel power began to gather pace through the widespread adoption of such locomotives as the EMD E7 and E8, the Alco PA, and the 1500 horsepower EMD F7s, all of these machines presenting power and efficient running that easily outshone even the most venerable of America's streamlined steam engines. Thus, by the turn of 1950, Contemporary streamlined steam locomotives, including the Milwaukee Roads Class A's and F7s, as well as the Southern Pacific Class GS3, the Pennsylvania Railroad Class T1, and the Norfolk and Western J Class, were facing retirement despite being only a decade old, with the last of the J Class being released into traffic in 1950, only to be withdrawn in 1959. For the Class A's, the first to be withdrawn was number three which was taken out of service in September 1949 after only 13 years of work and stripped for parts to keep the other three units on the go until 1951, with number four being removed from traffic in June, while the original numbers one and two remained on the Twin Cities Hiawatha until November, with all examples being broken up for scrap. As for the F7s, one of these would go out with a bang, as on July 27, 1950, Number 102, while running between Chicago and Milwaukee on the North Woods Hiawatha, suffered a frozen right main crosshead 70 miles south of Milwaukee that caused the cylinder to explode at a speed of around 100 miles an hour, though despite the engine being damaged beyond repair, no derailment occurred, and the only injuries were among the two engine crew. However, by the time of number 102 spectacular destruction, withdrawals for the Class F7 had begun from November 10, 1949 when Class Premier No. 100 was taken out of use, the remaining four being slowly whittled down throughout 1950, until on August 10, 1951, the final Class F7, No. 105, was removed from traffic without fanfare, all examples being scrapped by the end of the year. Thus ended the Milwaukee Road's flirtation with high-speed train travel, and from what had once been the fastest average passenger train service in the world, the onset of domestic airliners and the interstate highway system would rob the railroad of its main customer base on the vital Twin Cities run and commuter services to Milwaukee. The Twin Cities Hiawatha, which had been split into a morning and evening service from January 1939, 
would soldier on with dwindling passenger numbers until the turn of the 1970s, with the morning Hiawatha being discontinued from January 23, 1970, while the afternoon Hiawatha would survive until the formation of Amtrak on May 1, 1971, after which the Burlington Northern's Empire Builder was rerouted over the Milwaukee Roads line through Milwaukee to St. Paul, and services reduced solely to that train. This, combined with its ever-decreasing freight traffic, as other railroads provided better and faster operations across the Midwest, made the Milwaukee Road the weak sister of the Western American railroad scene, seeing continued fiscal collapse and a gradual reduction of its once-pronounced domain until its final breakup in the mid-1980s between the Chicago and Northwestern, the Grand Trunk Western, and the Sioux Line. In the end, while the Milwaukee Road's streamlined steam locomotives weren't unique, implying high-speed train travel across the continental United States, it was a mixture of their phenomenal performance, air-smoothed bodies, and superbly favourable route that made these expresses the fastest average passenger trains in the world for the period. However, one of the enduring mysteries of these machines is whether they truly were able to reach their possible top speeds of 130 miles an hour and more, as reported by engine crews and unofficial measurements, as if a formal assessment run had been conducted in a similar manner to the German and British engineers, the potential that these extremely powerful engines could have obtained the coveted world speed record for steam traction may have fallen to the Americans in the final years prior to World War II.